Coming up tonight on the News at 6. I think this is a really exciting step forward for this community. Helena has a new tool for helping track the issue of affordable housing here in the community. Plus, organizers are forced to cancel one of the capital city's annual holiday traditions, the Parade of Lights. From Montana's News Leader, this is MTN News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the News at 6. I'm Andy Curtis. And I'm Marian Davidson. Thanks for joining us. announcement since winning the governor's office, Governor-elect Greg Gianforte announced the formation of a task force to address the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. The 21-member team is made up of healthcare experts, business leaders, school administrators, law enforcement, and local and tribal leaders. Some members from the Helena Great Falls area include Adjutant General Matthew Quinn, commander of the Montana Air National Guard, and the current leader of Governor Bullock's Coronavirus Task Force. Cascade County Sheriff Jesse Slaughter, Wayne Liker, the VP of Refining Operations at Calumet, Liz Moore, the Executive Director of the Montana Nonprofit Association, Todd O'Hare, the President and CEO of the Montana Chamber of Commerce, and Village Pizza and Rialto Bar owner Dax Sertaro. The task force will come up with recommendations for how best to manage this pandemic. Gianforte said in a statement that his top priority is to, quote, protect the most vulnerable among us while also safely and fully opening back up our economy. Montana reported more than 1,100 additional cases of COVID-19 today. That is the highest number reported in a single day since the start of the pandemic. But keep in mind, state officials said yesterday's totals were lower because of a switch to a new reporting system and not all cases from Sunday were able to be entered into the system. The state currently has about 15,000 active cases and is approaching 500 active hospitalizations with 490 COVID-19 related deaths. Now, as a reminder, MTN numbers can vary from the state since we also track data reported from local health departments. Well, Helena city leaders took the next step forward to create a trust fund to support affordable housing development. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian looks at what the fund could do and why leaders say this type of investment is needed. During a meeting Monday night, the Helena City Commission voted 4-1 to one in favor of creating a new affordable housing trust fund. Supporters said it could be one new tool in the toolbox to address the need for housing in this community. You know, we have the opportunity to really utilize some local resources, albeit it may not be a lot to begin with, um, that can be leveraged for, uh, for other bigger projects and accessing other resources. So I think this is a really exciting step forward for this community. The city will transfer $100,000 from the general fund into the new trust fund. In the future, money from the sale of city property and private contributions could also go into it. The money could be used in a variety of ways, to pay for the construction or renovation of affordable housing, or to help leverage other investments. That's what I think is great about this fund. It creates flexibility. Michael O'Neill is the executive director of the Helena Housing Authority, which helps about 1,800 people in the area through various housing programs. He says there's been a need for more affordable housing here for years, and that's only increasing after the Montana real estate market heated up during the pandemic. That's having some very positive consequences, but it's having negative consequences where it's driving out um, the affordability for those who live and work here. O'Neill says the trust fund could help groups like the Housing Authority secure grants and other resources to address Helena's aging housing stock. Any housing property that's over 60 years old or in some cases 80 years old, you're going to have major need, you know, improvements that need to be done. City staff said they're putting together a committee now that will work on an administrative plan for how the fund will be used. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. Missoula approved this type of housing trust fund earlier this year, and Helen and the leaders say they looked into that one when designing their own. 
All right, now it's time for First Weather with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz. Good evening, Mary. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we've got our eye on sunburst here uh, on this Tuesday evening. A little light snow falling up on parts of the High Line and uh, closer to the Canadian border. A little more than just a little snow west of the Continental Divide. Uh, traveling up over Lookout Pass, not the easiest task today, but just a little light snow will be moving through the state here tonight into tomorrow. Accumulations, a skiff, a coating, a dusting, either way you put it, light, maybe up to an inch or two. There she blows, a big windstorm blowing in here for the weekend, and it's pretty chilly outside. It will get colder for Wednesday, but after that, the numbers are on the up and up. I'll let you know when we could be up to 60 degrees again. That's coming up in the full forecast. All right, thanks for that, Curtis. Helena's annual Parade of Lights is officially canceled, even after organizers attempted to keep it going in a new format. Downtown Helena Incorporated made the announcement today. The parade is traditionally held the day after Thanksgiving, and in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, organizers had looked at doing a reverse parade this year. That means floats would be parked and visitors would drive through them. But after the Public Health Department limited gatherings to 50 people, Downtown Helena decided they could not have the type of event they hoped for. Downtown Helena is working on other ways to attract the public this season. They are sponsoring a Deck the Halls contest for businesses that decorate their storefronts, and they are running a Shop Local, Shop Now campaign. Well, the holiday season usually means lights, decorations, music, and for lots of us out there, shopping. MTN's Coulter Anstat tells us what national experts and local businesses are expecting this year. We have sold a ton of these gnomes. Real Deals owner Monique Meehan is optimistic about the 2020 holiday shopping season. I think more people are staying around home. I think they've kind of learned that um, home is a priority right now and family is, so I think we'll probably be where we were in years past. According to the National Retail Federation, trying to forecast this holiday shopping season is like trying to put together a puzzle without all the pieces. In February, the organization expected retail sales overall in 2020 to be up three and a half to 4.1 percent over 2019, but that was assuming the coronavirus wouldn't become a global pandemic. Meehan is counting on a busy holiday season. We always have a bunch of events, so this is kind of a, the time of year where we do more of those to attract people. At Clover, owner Christina Remsen is not sure what to expect this year. I think this holiday season is just another, we're just figuring out new ways to do business. Those new ways include options such as private shopping parties and private shopping appointments. Holiday season is kind of a make or break it for small businesses in terms of our year. And so we're hoping that it's going to be busy. We're hoping that we can make our customers feel comfortable coming out and shopping and supporting local businesses. So get your wallets ready and let the shopping begin, if it hasn't already. In Great Falls, Coulter Anstat, MTN News. And still ahead on the news at 6, Chief Political Reporter Mike Dennison will break down how the polls got this past election so wrong across Montana. Montana's news leader. You're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for spending some time with us here tonight. Now, going into last week's election here in Montana, most public polls had said that the big statewide races in the state were relatively close, with Republicans still having a slight edge. But the final outcome had GOP candidates winning by decisive margins up and down the ticket. So how did so many polls miss the mark in Montana? MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison takes a closer look. Most polls had Montana's U.S. Senate contest between Senator Steve Daines and Governor Steve Bullock, a statistical toss-up, and the same for the U.S. House race. They also said President Trump and Republican gubernatorial candidate Greg Gianforte were leading, but only by single digits. Yet not one of those races was decided by less than 10 points, with winning margins anywhere from 60,000 to 100,000 votes. University of Montana political scientist Rob Saldin says one reason for the disconnect may be that Trump supporters don't like responding to polls. People who support Donald Trump are uh, less likely to take those calls and to agree to participate in a poll because they see it as uh, another one of these elite institutions that's biased against them and their president, uh, part of the fake media, uh, this whole narrative. But another possible factor is the record voter turnout last week, which saw tens of thousands of new voters, many of them younger. 
Those people are the least likely to respond to most polls. They're the ones who showed up. So they didn't show up in the polls and they did show up in terms of voting. And it appears they favored Republicans. Some pollsters, however, didn't miss the spread. Emerson polling from Boston polled Montanans in early October and had Danes winning by nine points, he won by 10, and Gianforte and Trump each winning by 13 points. They won by 12 and 17, respectively. Emerson used only text messages to cell phones and says it felt it had a good, accurate sample of Montana voters. Republican pollster Eric Iverson of Missoula also told MTN News some polls didn't properly account for the partisan makeup of Montana voters, which is increasingly Republican. He says his polls for the Danes campaign figured Republicans outnumbered Democrats by anywhere from 11 to 14 points in Montana, and his polls never had Danes trailing Bullock. Pollsters agree that partisan alignment of voters is becoming a dominant factor, and maybe that's the simple reason that a big turnout means big Republican victories in Montana. There are just a lot more Republicans in Montana than there are Democrats, and so if you have a higher turnout, well, that might, that might very well mean that you just are turning out more Republicans who, for whatever reason, haven't uh, chosen to vote in the past. So when almost everyone votes in Montana, Republicans win. If that's true, Democrats may have a long road back to competitiveness in Montana politics. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. All right, now let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz for what's coming up in weather. All right, full disc weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz. All right, welcome back everybody. Good Tuesday evening to you all. A pretty sky out there today with uh, some of the clouds and a few snow showers and also some blue and some sun. 27 right now in Great Falls. It's chilly out there. Southwest winds at about 16 miles per hour. Helena literally freezing and it feels like 24 with the west wind at about 10 miles per hour. 20s and 30s. A lot of locations did get just above the freezing point by a, a few degrees today. Now we're dropping back below the freezing point. Watch for a little spotty ice out there tonight and we will have some snow coming through some light snow and that will also uh, add to some slippery spots out there. You know, there you can see the wind speeds a little strong out there around Livingston. Also cut bank and uh, calm conditions around Missoula and Butte right now on the radar. Some activity here. Uh, no, it's not a blizzard, but uh, there are some pretty good snow showers. Uh, it's been kind of nasty from around Garrison Junction through Bonner and Clinton and uh, the Missoula area all the way over Lookout Pass into Spokane. Some pretty nasty roads as well. Up here on the High Line, Cup Bank and Shelby and Whitlash and Chester picking up some snow right now. Roads getting a little slick out there. Looks like just to the west or to the south of Haver, we've got a few uh, flakes of snow flying and Haver will have a little in the way of some snow here tonight. And you can see some of that snow off into parts of uh, Alberta and British Columbia through Idaho and some mixed rain and snow depending on elevation into Washington and Oregon. A little disturbance coming through. Winter weather advisory where you see the shade of purple, the white here, including Great Falls and Helen and Cut Bank, Haver and Lewistown. That is a special weather statement by the National Weather Service, basically just saying, hey, watch out. We have a little coating of some snow, maybe up to an inch or two, not necessarily winter weather advisory uh, criteria. The storm that uh, gave us blizzard conditions, parts of the state that is now moving up through the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains and another storm. This is Tropical Storm Ada. There's Miami, Key West, Ada. Uh, really an interesting storm, maybe not getting to a, a huge hurricane, but it made landfall down there into Central America and then has come up across Cuba, across the Keys, and now it looks like it's heading back towards the Keys. No real upper level steering currents here, so it's kind of just drifting and doing whatever it wants to do, like most tropical systems do. Uh, back here in Montana, a little snow coming through tonight into tomorrow morning. Here we are by 5, 6 o'clock, and you can see some of the areas that will have all received snow through the overnight hours into tomorrow morning. So there will be some slick spots. This is not a storm where you're going to have to get out the snowblower in most cases, but there may be a little coating of some snow here or there. Uh, the Continental Divide looks like we could have a little heavier, more consistent uh, snow activity through the day on Wednesday. 
That system clears in time for Thursday. We're looking at mostly sunny skies. Looks like a pretty nice day. Clouds increasing late ahead of the next storm system. So how much snow? Again, a skiff, a coating, a dusting, what have you. Uh, light amounts here. The bear paws and out around the high woods and down the continental divide, we could have a couple inches, maybe in a few spots above about six, 7,000 feet. There could be four or five inches of snow into the mountains, but in the lower elevations, just some light snow. Here's the forecast for tonight. Teens, a little light snow, roads a little slick, getting covered over with some of this light accumulation here. Uh, chilly night though, single digits and teens, maybe near 20 around Helena. And here's the forecast for tomorrow. Areas of light snow through the morning hours, maybe the sun poking through into the afternoon. Teens for highs in Cup Bank 20s and to about 30 degrees elsewhere into Thursday. This is looking like a pretty nice day. Windy across the prairies. We'll have high temperatures generally in the 30s heading into Friday. Here comes the next storm system. This one is a powerful one, but it will likely produce more in the way of snow west of the divide Friday night into Saturday and a lot of wind east of the divide. Here we are on Saturday and again you're traveling Marias Pass up over any of the passes over the Continental Divider in western Montana. There will be a little more snow, a lot of wind, a lot of wind here for just about everybody, uh, especially east of the divide. Hell in a seven day forecast, a little light snow for Veterans Day tomorrow. Not bad on Thursday, Friday night into Saturday. We could have some snow showers and again, maybe a little coating temperatures warming up into the 40s. Andy Curtis next Tuesday. Ah, there, there you go. Is. And everybody else, too. <laughs> We've got temperatures up around 60 degrees on Tuesday, but Great Falls, a little light snow tonight, tomorrow chilly for Veterans Day, and then warmer but windy through the weekend. Well, thanks for finally getting to that, Curtis. And stick around, everybody, because coming up, how Big Sky is preparing to open their slopes back up in the middle of this pandemic. Tana's News Leader. You're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back to the News at 6. COVID-19 shut down Big Sky Resort earlier this year, but they say they are more than ready to open the slopes in just a couple of weeks. MTN's Ashley Washburn has a preview of what to expect this season. With Thanksgiving only a couple weeks away, that means opening day is right around the corner here in Big Sky. The slopes will look and feel different with COVID-19 protocols in place. So here's what you need to expect heading into this year's ski season. A lot of things that are the same, but the things that are different would be the obvious ones, which is asking people to stay home when they're sick, but on property wearing face masks is, is a requirement and an expectation. Beyond that, uh, social distancing everywhere we can and giving people plenty of space. With almost 6,000 acres of skiable terrain, Big Sky has plenty of room to spread out on the slopes this season. And as an added precaution, the resort is replacing their traditional singles line with a friends and family line. We have a, a normal zone in which people are comfortable riding with others and a friends and family, which you kind of ride with those that you travel with and those you already spend time with keeping your circle pretty tight. Big Sky won't be limiting their daily hours because of COVID-19. Instead, they're allowing a limited amount of skiers to get a head start on the slopes before opening them to the public. And that is access to a limited number of people to ski fresh corduroy early morning from that zone of eight to nine o'clock. And that's going to be something that's going to be helping out spread out the crowds early, extend our, our daily access and, and give a little bit more room to all the skiers. And if you've been unsure about buying a season pass because of the current circumstances, Big Sky is offering a worry free winter assurance with each purchase, which provides a credit towards next year's season pass if the resort were to close because of COVID-19. It's been a challenging 2020 for everyone. Uh, skiing is absolutely a part of who we are around in Montana, and we're excited to get this open in 16 days. If you've been trying to buy a pass online, they have been put on hold temporarily, but they're getting ready to reopen them soon. So make sure you keep checking back on their website. In Big Sky, I'm Ashley Washburn, MTN News. All right, and we'll wrap things up here on the News at 6 when we come back. As news leader, you're watching MTN News at 6. All right, well, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for spending some time with us here tonight. Finishing things on this note, Collins Dictionary made its pick for Word of the Year and it is lockdown. That's right, lockdown. A spokesperson for the publication says there were 4,000 references to the word in 2019, and that number multiplied by 6,000% in 2020. 
The publication tracks word usage in the media, conversations, and use on websites. A Cowan spokesperson says that it's not necessarily a word to be celebrated, but rather a, a way to define 2020, sadly. In other words, making the top 10 were, let's see if you can guess these ones, coronavirus, social distancing, self-isolation, and furlough. All right, my question is, how do they track that in conversations? Don't even want to guess. <laughs> That's it for the news at 6. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 10.